Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to take a look at the at the newly released Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy, Trilogy Deluxe Class Huffer. And now this figure actually is one of the uh, most simplistic transfer, Transformers you can get currently right now of 2021. And is actually one of the um, 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 cool figures, um, um, and a nice decent figure and actually is a lot of the does look a lot like his G his G one form except for some areas and those some areas are 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 um hard hard to um to like and there I have a lot of areas of critique with this figure and a lot of areas that I did like about this figure so let's start off by by um, taking Huffer in for a closer look and see um what what this figure is all about. Here, taking a look at Huffer's face, honestly, one thing I did not really like about the this figure is that the paint applications on the eyes, since the helmet is a purplish, not purplish, but a darker shade of blue, and the eyes are really a dark shade of blue as well, they do apparently kind of seem seem like they are not there. That is just one area of critique I did not like. Um, one area of critique that I have about this figure, and one feature I did not like, um. But other than that, the paint applications on this figure are amazing. So, speaking of paint applications, first let's talk, talk about this figure's weapon accessories. That being his his blaster, which actually looks pretty cool, pretty nice, and actually would look, look so, something real like something really cool. Although Huffer really never did use weapons in the G1 cartoon, I'm really happy to see that they did at least include the um his his blaster right here and a shield which actually did come out really cool. These both um weapon accessories are both an orange piece of plastic but but they but but all the other colors you see here have been painted. So um I uh the black paint on on this um, shield is nice, the silver paint application as well, and right here um, on the blaster is just all orange and they painted it all in black. And that that is actually really cool. Now another thing worth noting about this figure is that that on some of the some of the um, images online, like for the for the first production one, showed that his entire foot was was. Um, Orange and then his hands were actually silver which on honestly on the last um, product they do come at black that it that that's n for me that is not something like so so um something to get so frustrated about by actually looking at the CGI on the box and his hands actually being silver on the CGI on the box and the first product um I would have loved to see that it would have been um um painted in silver but that is just a minor critique and I would like to have this painted in orange but probably they had it in in gray because gray is a stronger piece of plastic than orange plastic so I've heard um Besides um of the areas of critique, let's keep going over the features. The Autobot logo right there, I really do like that. The face, um, it is painted really well except for the eyes, that is just one thing. The sculpting work on the body and the torso does look good. And this figure does come with an ab crunch, but is actually mainly due to transformation. The 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 arms can go a full 360, the biceps as well, and there is no form of, of wrist rotation. The the elbows can hinge up maybe 90 degrees. The the knees as well, they could go way beyond 90 degrees because of due to transformation. The this thing is on a ankle rocker joint. And one thing I really did really did not like about this figure is that right here, um, it does show like right here, like if it, if his foot did stretch out and that's nice. But if you wanted to pull it out more, this whole like gap right here is just quite disturbing. And it wouldn't have costed Hasbro that much if they just um put like a little bit more plastic like. More so that um we could so that it wouldn't be looking all weird. It wouldn't even cost Hasbro all that much just to do that. But honestly, um other than that, this is just a great figure, a nice piece to the collection. Um, on the side paint applications, we see some five millimeter ports all over the sides of his body. On the back, we also see another five millimeter port. But that is mostly because this figure does combine with the other War for Cybertron Kingdom figure, Ractonite, that I did show um my review a few days ago. Um, that that you did see that that all the pieces um uh, uh, do mostly apply to this figure. I did not show 
this figure and rack that I'm combining, but in this video I will show later on. Um, right here we can see the sculpting looks nice. Um, the interior actually does really look nice. If you do notice, it looks like there's a lot of pieces in there, but honestly, I really wish they would have made the wheels fold inside, and it wouldn't even cost Hasbro that much just to do that, and, and it would have filled out some of those hollow spaces. So now with that being said, also one thing I did like is that there are um, some tail lights at the back of the feet which are going to be part of the car mode later on and and honestly this figure actually does look good. The paint applications did come out great. Um, the molding did as well. Just some paint apps were, were, not, um, were not so like so so grand about it and honestly the front part of the truck actually does look nice if we look at the top part of the headlights they are painted in a in a blue plastic which i did like that and the whole um whole area over here is actually a transparent piece of blue plastic so with that being said let's cut let's um let's um um, let's do a size comparison between huffer and other other um g1 autobots the other G1 Autobots that, that would would be near Huffer and everything. So here we have Huffer com being compared with other G1 Autobots that being Hot Rod, RC, Jazz, and Ultra Magnus. Honestly, the scale between this figure and, and um, Ultra Magnus and Hot Rod actually and and Jazz actually do scale well. I'm not so sure about RC, but I do know these do, do scale actually pretty nice and pretty well. If we just um, take a look at like Jazz and Huffer, we can see Huffer is quite smaller and and just Jazz is a bit bulkier, but but uh, other than um, but but we can see that the size pro probably is accurate, probably isn't, but I'm pretty sure the size is is entirely accurate um, to how Huffer appeared in other um, G1 cartoons and everything. And I really hope that we do see him in the in the final chapter of the War for Cybertron trilogy that is coming out, um, I believe, on Thursday of July of 2021. On the I believe the twenty something, but it is coming on a Thursday or something. But I am I am pretty sure that this this character might be in it, just probably from brief scenes in the background and stuff. But honestly, this this figure um yeah will look um quite great in the series. And also speaking of the series um. Uh, these War for Cybertron figures all come with a collector's card, and then um, with Huffer did come with the ARC, and I already have an ARC card, which is quite disappointing why I got the same one, but if you peel the back, you can reveal a different uh, um, future, and honestly, it's the same one you saw from Ultra Magnus, where the ARC apparently is now a Decepticon crashing toward Earth, which honestly, probably not going to happen, but but a great, a great addition, although it's the same card we got from last time. Now, now, um, now, um, for the, for the combination between, um, Huffer and Ractonite, this is the most, um, um, exciting part of the video, is that you, is that you get the pieces from Ractonite, I have already pre-combined them from the video, if you saw the video, you would know that I, that they're already combined and everything, and all ready to, uh, for, to combine with Huffer. So now first you're gonna get this uh, hip bone part and then you're just gonna put it on Huffer's shoulder like so. Just simply insert it right here. Then after that you're gonna get this in, this entire back assembly and then it, it, it there is a five millimeter port right there. I believe so and then you're just gonna have to push it in. Although it, it, it will become very difficult. Um, but once you've done it once or twice it, it becomes quite easy and and we have the back assembly now attached to Huffer. Now this piece right here, you're just gonna have to make sure this um this peg is um uh un unattached, and then just simply put it inside the hand right here. And there we have Huffer now with um Ractonites um with the spear-like thing that that came on Ractonite. And now for the shield, which is actually Ractonite's head, we just simply insert it on on Huffer um on any five millimeter port. I the the instructions state to put it on the hand, but I would like to put it right here as it does look a bit cooler. And and the, we have Huffer full, fully um decked out with with some of the Ractonite armor. And honestly, what to say is that it looks amazing. But since this piece is so heavy, it can cause the elbow joint to become quite loose. So that is one thing I did not like about the Ractonite armor. But other than that, a great looking figure, especially with this with this um, beast mode armor, it does look quite amazing. And and actually, this figure is 
just such a cool figure to have in the collection. These two are just really cool. So I'll either have them combined or uncombined in my in my shelf. The, um, tell me in the comment section down below if you would have these two figures combined or uncombined. And and um, they actually do look look quite quite great with each other. Now for a for the transformation of Huffer, simply I'm just gonna have to bring in Huffer over here. Just um take this back part right here and honestly one thing I did forget is that you can uh, put this back part in any direction you want to make this figure look a bit taller um, I like to keep it as enclosed to the figure as possible um, that may the, it looks more cool like that or you could have it a little higher a little lower however you want the, there are multiple ways you could have have this back assembly um, um, folded okay back to the transformation the first thing you're gonna have to do is just get Huffer set um, turn it all around. Um, oh, and it is connected by a ball joint. That is what makes this um, his head um, turn all the all the way around. After that, you're gonna have to just simply make sure these pieces do um, fold backward like this. And then after that, you're just gonna have to disconnect this part right here. Then after that, these shoulder pieces, you're just gonna have to have them like this. Just, just make sure that they do fold out like that. The wheels do fold out like this, like so. And then, and then we have this part complete. Then you're gonna have to just make sure this piece does fold out like so. And then after that, you're just gonna have to make sure the legs do straighten out and connect them together. But before you do that, you're gonna have to just make sure this piece, this um, this um slot and this little little peg right here, this slot and and yeah peg do connect to each other like so, like that. And then do the same process to the other side. Right here, you're just gonna do the same process right here. And I believe it is already in. And then after that, you're just gonna have to make sure that this piece, this piece does fold in like so. And then make sure that this whole hollow spot on the arm does um, fall into this tab right here, like so. After that, you're gonna make sure these hands fall in like this. And then we can already see how the how how Huffer's um truck is coming out. Then after that, you're just gonna have to make sure these pieces attach right here like so. Then after that, you're gonna have to make sure that this attaches like that like so. And there, now we have Huffer fully transformed into his little tiny little truck form. And honestly, what to say about this little truck form? It it kind of looks funny and kind of cute how it does look like, and is actually fitted to suit the uh to suit the um, Transformers War for Cybertron um, Optim Leader Class Optimus Prime trailer. And unfortunately, I do not have that figure just yet, but I do have the Leader Dark of the Moon Studio Series Optimus Prime trailer. And honestly, maybe uh, I haven't tried this before, but I believe it can work. Uh, it, it can work the same way. And honestly, this looks way cooler than the... Than the, um, than the then the War for Cybertron trailer, where the War for Cybertron trailer would would sit a bit upward, while this one um, just uh, does connect really good. And in some old cartoons, we did see Huffer towing Optimus Prime's trailer when Optimus Prime was seriously injured in a battle. And honestly, you can recreate that entire G1 moment where Optimus Prime is is wounded and in battle, and Huffer has has to um take take his trailer and transport it somewhere although it does kind of look kind of slanted ish but that is probably the nature of the trailer's design and and it does look quite amazing um and maybe i'll just keep i'll, ju uh, I'll just keep the trailer like this and huffer like this um like in my in my um shelf to keep this um to keep this actually looking quite cool and create some classic animated scenes so now let's take a look at some of Huffer's um, features. And one thing you will you will notice is that when you connect this trailer with this, it will deattach, but just simply reattach it like so. So let me just put the trailer to the side. And now for the weapon storage of Huffer, you're gonna simply um, get his shield like so. First, get his shield, and then after that, you're just gonna have to make sure it does tap into these slots. So it has two ta two um, circular slots here and one right there and then two right here and one right there so you're simply gonna have to just make sure it does connect like so like that and honestly it does not look all that bad it looks quite amazing and cool and now for the blasters I was not expecting what they did is that they in fact separate 
So you're just gonna put your nail over here and then separate them and they they are a piece of orange plastic So all the black you see here is painted So I really did like that and I did not expect this from a deluxe class figure that the weapons would separate into two pieces and and um, Become become another piece so um you could so what you're gonna have to do is get this little hollow orange cavity right here And insert it into this slot right here and then and then do the same process to the other side like so and there, we have Huffer fully decked out with all of his weapons that came with the box. And honestly, this looks cool. The color choices between the orange right here actually do look quite, quite good. Honestly, I feel like they are a little off, but that is just a minor critique that I have. And I, honestly, this figure does look quite amazing and quite cool of, of like the whole transformation. The transformation was quite simple and, and quite nice. And then bringing closer in, bringing Huffer cl for a closer look look up um right here we can see some nice um silver paint applications we can see the the windshield wipers i am surprised that we did get that on a deluxe figure some transparent blue plastic the headlights that i showed you earlier i am not a fan of this pin showing up though but that is just just a tiny critique that i have um uh, although i would have just um if i was hasbro i would have just found a way to cover this but but probably it would have um made the engineering different or just paint this orange but honestly this just looks so good um the the silver paint applications right here do look amazing the orange the plastic and this silver part right here does look nice uh i did not like that the the hands do show up on the back but probably if you just have it like so like this you probably aren't even gonna notice i know many of you um will not like the hands at all but i i do not mind the hands um showing up at all but honestly i um, uh, it didn't. It did not bother me at all that the hands did show up, but um, but it did a little, and it didn't. But but it, what can we expect from, from such a small figure? And now let's transform Huffer back into his robot form. So simply, what you can have to do is simply get these two gun pieces right here, then reattach them like so, like this, and then deattach this piece right here. Put the weapons to the side for now. Then after that, you're gonna have to make sure this piece does deattach like so. Then make sure this these two pieces um, do deattach and fold in so in under the foot like so. After that, you're gonna have to make sure this piece uh, unattaches from this piece. The same process to the other side. After that, you're gonna have to just flip over Heifer's head like so. Make sure you crunch in his abs like this. Make sure the wheel, the front wheels do go in, work like so, and then make sure these two pieces do tab in. Make sure the hands come out like so. Make sure that all the all the five millimeter ports are facing outward. Make sure that you just straighten that out. And then here we have Huffer fully transformed back into his robot form. And honestly, what to say of this figure is that it is quite amazing. I I think that the sculpting between this figure um. Is quite is quite um nice and everything, uh, just some areas that I did not like, but but I could survive with without without the the extra paint applications on this figure. And honestly, they look this figure just looks so amazing, um, of of how this figure would look like and and his C and his CGI box, which I'll show you. I'll bring in the box right now. But right here we can see Huffer in both his robot. Oh, with both his robot and car form, the CGI form right here, and then if we move to the side, we can see deluxe class Cybertronian letters. In the back, we see the it transforms in 14 steps from robot to to semi truck form, and then right here we get that same kingdom artwork. And then right here for the truck mode top Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy, the bottom says nothing except the accessories. Transformers more than meets the eye, and that's it. So that concludes my video of Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron um, Huff, um, Deluxe Class Huffer um, review. I hope you enjoyed this um, video of Huffer and everything. Um, honestly, I did like this figure. There are some areas that I did not like, but but my final thoughts: four out. I mean, five out of uh, um, like out of five stars, I'd give this a four point four stars. Uh, just because of the paint application and some some sculpting. Um, uh, some sculpting stuff I would love to see like more like more like dance sculpt sculpting but other than that a great figure I did uh, enjoy this figure the, the transformation was really nice and that about concludes my video thank you for watching please subscribe leave a nice comment and until then I will see you at our next Transformers Studio Series or War for Cybertron 
video. And the reason I am um, collecting more for Cybertron figures is because they have classic characters and stuff. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe, leave a nice comment. Until then, I will see you at our next Transformers War for Cybertron video. Until then, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.